Welcome to Masters of Product Management, powered by Sequent Learning Networks, a show that provides extraordinary insights for product managers who want to go faster and farther in their product management careers. Welcome back to Masters of Product Management. I'm Stephen Haynes. The idea behind Masters of Product Management is pretty simple. Our idea is to tap into the experiences of people who work in and around product management and to talk about our own thoughts and ideas to help you learn and grow in your product management career. And today, I want to talk about soft skills and influence. Now, these are the skills that always seem to appear on corporate performance appraisal forms and focus on things like communication and motivation, time management and conflict management and a host of other attributes that are associated with what I used to call just getting along and influencing and thinking. And if you look at any of the the stuff that's written about soft skills, um, people associate it with communication, speaking, writing, listening. And one of my mentors back in my corporate life said it's having a context for people. So with this in mind, and as a point of reference, I was recently watching an interview. It was with the CEO of LinkedIn. And one of the things that he said was that they had been doing some research on the things that are needed in employees who work in in the corporate world. And he said that leaders of many of these companies believe that there is a huge shortfall in soft skills. So it's it's a major problem. And I don't know the extent to how major that problem is. And to me, I see evidence of soft skill violations almost on a daily basis, whether it's me walking into a retail establishment or even things um, that are my own shortfalls. So so to be honest, the, the mastery of these soft skills were not always easy for me. I've made lots and lots of mistakes. And sometimes it, it extends to areas like listening or sometimes my intuition fails me or sometimes I don't make the eye contact that I need to at the right time. And one would think that, gee, you know, you've been in business all these years, you should be a master at this. But the way I look at it is I'm a work in progress. And I think that you're all a work in progress as well. And it's not feasible in just a short podcast to just, you know, lay the, you know, clean the slate and say, here's, here are all the things we need to do to, to really brush up on our soft skills. Oh, and there was one other thought of mine, and that was how... Many of these skills and these professional attributes are not always cultivated inside the corporate world. They're shaped by how we live and lessons of life and I sometimes I think the fabric of the human being. But if I bring it back to product management as, as this function in the company and the role that product managers play, it reaches very horizontal. That means it really extends across the organization. and. So it's not a real secret that product managers have to harness the efforts and output of a lot of other people in all these different departments in order to produce better results. And of course, the results are the great products that customers buy and you get money in your checkbook and everything like that. But from my point of view, and I'm sure that you'll also relate to this, and that is it, it's a huge effort to harness cross-functional resources because they don't always have the same priority as you. And you've got to use some of these skills to persuade or convince or get other people to follow along so that they devote some of their energy to the greater good of your product's business. And again, I think that's easier said than done. And I don't know about you, but in my corporate life, you know, the big lament in the product teams were, or the product managers were always accountable. We didn't have the authority. And so I'm sure that you can relate to that as well. So let's bring this back, the, the soft skills, to perhaps maybe the power of persuasion, the, the art of maybe selling an idea, or just basic relationship building to influence people who don't work for you. And that we can fine tune some of these things so that we can enhance our ability to communicate and persuade and, and exude the passion that gets others interested and engaged so you can get the buy-in that you need and to, again, encourage everybody to go in the same direction, All right? So there, there are a couple of things that I think about with respect to these soft skills. And, and one of them has to do with 
how we actually convey a story to other people. Now, again, storytelling is you know been carried on for generations and generations, and, and it's a wonderful tool. But what what is this storytelling? And you know, you don't just walk into a developer's office and say, "Once upon a time, there was a customer." What we really need to be able to do is say and convince people that based on something that we saw or observed, whether it was how a customer was doing what they were doing or that there was an operational problem or something, that they're put in the mood, that they get what you're saying from the story that you're telling. And I can remember a number of times in, in my, both in my corporate life and in my current life, that when I see something that just seems off, within a customer's realm, you get passionate. And when you can convey that passion in the story, like I can't believe what I saw the other day, all right? And and this customer was struggling and the app wasn't working or goodness, they, they, they couldn't do the task that they set out to do and they were so incredibly frustrated. If you can portray that and then even engage, like what have you seen or come and watch this with me, right? You're, you're engaging and you're bringing somebody together. You're bringing them to the table through the story and through the, through the passion. And then there are some of these other things that go along with this. It's like, well, how do I document the story? Well, sometimes you have to write the story down and you have to write it in a way that engages the person who is going to be reading it. So you could be writing a customer scenario or a customer story or, or even a simple user story. Whatever those things are, you have to be able to convey what that is so somebody can react to it. So what do we ultimately want to have happen? Well, perhaps you want a developer to code something in a way that relieves the tension of the end customer who's got the problem that you conveyed in that story. And then all of a sudden you can start to see how this whole thing wraps together. And so some of the key secrets that I see is if you're connected with your marketplace and you're connected with things that are going on in your world, you may have a better time, if you will, of translating the things that you see and the things that you observe into something that a person a receiver of information can respond to in a way that gets them engaged overall, okay? So let's assume that we can have this as some kind of a foundation. What else can we do to enhance these quote-unquote soft skills? And I think part of it is, well, if we have to make a presentation, right? Presenting to others is important, and not all of us do a great job of those kinds of presentations. And so what are those presentation skills? And how do we stand up in front of a room of people and keep our feet planted on the ground and use our hands when necessary or not staring at a, at a PowerPoint slide and explaining what it is that's going on? They're not putting too much information on the slide where people are staring at the screen instead of listening to what you're doing, right? And I, and I remember when, when I had taken a presentation skills class years and years ago, how the idea is not only just explaining and telling the story and exuding the passion, but literally looking somebody in the eye. And, and how long does it take to look somebody in the eye when you're giving a presentation? Well, you know, it's I'm establishing a relationship with that person for a second or two seconds where you literally, there's an eye contact and then moving on, another eye contact and moving on. And what you're doing is you're having a conversation, a very personal conversation with lots and lots of people in one audience. So if you can actually start getting your mind around this, there's not one soft skill overall. There are a lot of things that we have to do, a lot of balls in the air that we have to get our minds around in order for us to convince and engage and influence and build the relationships that are necessary in order for us to harness the power of people who work across the organization or with people with, with whom we interact in our day-to-day -day life. That's basically what I want to talk to you today about in terms of these soft skills or professional and personal attributes. That's my story for today, 
And I hope you'll join us next time for Masters of Product Management. I'm Stephen Haynes. Thanks very much. You've been listening to Masters of Product Management, powered by Sequent Learning Networks. If you'd like to take your career to the next level with additional tools, training, coaching, and books, be sure to visit Sequent Learning Networks at sequentlearning.com.